Today I'm going to show you how to reprogram your keys if you did a cluster swap and how to add the truck apps the easy way if you're lucky. Now first off you're familiar with the standard four key. I'm going to show you how to program a flip key. This is actually purchased off of eBay. You can get two of them. Um, I'll put the link in the description. I've got one here in my hand. Um, the second one, unfortunately, the place I was having cutting them, um, apparently the key slipped in the clamp. And, well, one side looks like a car key. The other side of the key looks like a house key. It won't turn. So, first off, I'm going to put a key in the ignition. All right. Now, I've got a software which is free to download called Forescan, F-O-R-S-C-A-N. Give it a second here to boot up. There you go. I also purchased the suggested OBD2 scanner and programmer I prefer the USB type on this one because honestly not something you may want to do Bluetooth with now the scanner I will put in the description for the link for it the nice thing about this scanner versus some of the other ones out there is there's no can switch that you have to flip back and forth it's all internal it automatically does it for you it saves you some hassle Let me get the camera set up here. Okay. Start the process. Down here in the lower left corner, you'll see the connection. Click that. Now with this connector, you're always going to get this one that's running USB. Hit yes. I'm going to bypass this right now. You can see where I've scanned it before. And that's what it's doing. It's pulling up the save files. Mine's at 14. Okay, and what you need to look for is down here is wait for that to say ready. I would suggest when you're doing this to have either a really fully charged battery or running it off a uh, battery tender because this is going to drain your battery because for me it's going to take 12 minutes to do two of the steps because of the security timeout so i'm going to go ahead and save this one since i've actually already got it completed but i'm going to run through the process again for you okay so now we're ready down here and i'll show you the dts that this actually worked now the key thing is going to be the pcm which of course now says none for me. And then the IPS, IPC, excuse me, has to do with the radio. So that's actually nothing. There was actually another one here that said uh, IC, which is off now. So go into the wrench and you'll see IPC patch programming and module reset. Uh, what I did first, I went to the patch programming and hit the little blue arrow down here. And basically this here is telling you the different patch programming you can do. Uh, just hit okay. Now do make sure that you have two keys. Otherwise this will not work, period. Um, if you're doing the cluster swap, I would suggest doing this on your replacement cluster and not to your uh, cluster you're taking out. Because if you do it to your original cluster and it turns out that one of the keys you got would not program, then you're in major trouble. Because essentially you will not be able to start your vehicle. If you do it to the replacement cluster, then if you have to, you can put your original back in. You can run the vehicle. So click OK. And we're going to do 
erase and program keys. So like I said, I've already done this, but I'm actually going to run through it completely. So click OK. Now see, mine says time access required to diagnose the tester to enter a runtime delay before security access is allowed. So hit OK. Um, some of them will come up where it's got a uh, outside and inside key code. Uh, Forescan will generate an inside key code for you. Or you can use an external uh, key gen, I think is what it is, to generate the code. In all honesty, the 12-minute wait, I think, is easier than have to do one of the key generators. So click OK. And as you can see, this procedure will take approximately 12 minutes to complete. And the status bar on the bottom is gradually filling up. So I'm going to uh, stop recording right here, and then I will restart once it gets there. Okay. So reading the instructions here. Follow the procedure to erase all new keys. You must have two keys, basically, to complete this. So are two keys available? Yes. Okay, so basically, turn the ignition off, and then cycle it to the run for six seconds. Off, run, off, have your second key ready, and the ignition. Run. Hold it for six seconds. Off. Then click the OK button. Procedure completed successfully. Now you can exit out of here. And if you go back to check the DTS, erase these, so you get new ones. Make sure you have the key in the ignition. You're able to scan it. That generally helps. Cycle it on. Okay. error codes now before there would still be error codes here so this is the next step I did I went back into the wrench and I did a module reset run service it will basically force the IPC to reset turn the ignition off wait 10 seconds Turn it to on. I know it says 10 seconds, but it, it takes less time than that. Hit OK. Procedure completed successfully. I'm going to go back to procedures. DT. I'm going to do a new scan. This has to do with radio. So nothing there. Uh, this has to do with my airbags deployed. So let me go back to the wrench. The next thing I did was I went back in the patch programming. Yes. Module initialization. Now, when I did the program of the two keys and then I did the module reset, I was still getting a code saying that essentially the uh, IPC theft system did not match the PCM. It was giving me a code P1622. So to clear that code, I did a module initializ initialization, excuse me. Um, so basically just hit OK here. And it's another time access, kind of like how you're going to do the keys. So just continue anyways. 
and as you can see, the ticker down below or the bar graph is filling up. And I want to show you this. The easiest way to tell that your computer is actually doing something with your car is there's a little tiny green indicator light down there on my uh, OBD2 plug-in. And it's flashing means that it's actually sending signals back and forth. Yeah. Still figure out which tires got either a bad sensor or just low. So once this gets close to being completed, I will come back. Okay, after hitting the OK button, I went back into DTC. Uh, erased all the codes and did a rescan and as you can see the PCM if you did it correctly it will say no codes or none uh, before it was a P1622 there's nothing in the IPC the only thing that's left has to do with uh, airbag system I still got to replace the driver's seat and I need to have the uh, module that's in the center console a uh, reset yours can be reset um, I would suggest sending it out to get them reset. But to show proof, as you can see, I got the flip key in the ignition. It's in the on, just short of start. There is no flashing immobilizer. You get the pedal set here. And you start her up. It's going to be loud. So you'll see the immobilizer light and off she goes and before doing this process this three-step process the track apps were not on this gauge cluster my original cluster did not even have that option I will do a, a picture of when I installed this cluster at another video to show that it was not on there So now I have to take this cluster out, put the original back in, so I can send this cluster to have the mileage reprogrammed to match my other cluster. I've got the original cluster back in. To prove this cluster has not been programmed to this key, this is my original key. You can see the immobilizer light flashing there, putting the original key in. And it's going to rapid flash because the fact that the replacement uh, PCM or IPC is now synchronized with the PCM. So that key will not even start the vehicle right now unless I went through and redid the, mobile, the uh, module integration with the PCM. Which I can do, but there's no reason for me to. And see so here is the flip key, and it's going to do the same thing. So if I really needed to move the vehicle, I can basically do the process again with the original cluster to synchronize the cluster to the PCM. It would be able to move the vehicle. Uh, but now I have to send off the cluster. And I'm also going to take my center console apart to remove the airbag control module and send it off to get reset. Uh, that should have that uh, disassembly in another video.